Using Node.js, MongoDB and NodeMailer for emails, we can set up an OTP email verification backend. And that's what we are going to do in this video. We will create all the models, routes and functions that will be needed and test in Postman afterwards. I will be working with a Node.js login system codebase which we built on the channel. If you haven't seen the series yet, you should still be able to set up the OTP verification by following this video to the end. I will link to the full playlist and source code at the end of the video and also in the description. To start the verification process, we need a model. This model will define the structure of the verification data that we want to store. In the models directory, we already have a user file and this is the model for the user that we want to verify. All the models in this project will be created using Mongoose. In the file, we use Mongoose to set up a schema for the user and we use Mongoose once again to create a model for the user, which we then export. We'll do the same for the user verification, so we create a user OTP verification file. In this file, we'll bring in Mongoose once again and we'll define a schema for the user OTP verification. The OTP verification record will have a user ID property, which will be a string. Now this will refer to the auto-generated ID of the user, so we can set up some referencing to enforce that, but for now we'll leave it as simple as it is. Next, the verification record will have an OTP property, and this will be a string as well. Also, to have a date of creation and expiry. Using a schema, we will create a user OTP verification model and we will export it. Now we move to the file where we want to set up our route, and mine is the user.js file under API. In this file, I will import the model we just created, and this file has the express router already imported. So we move to requesting for an OTP. Now requesting for an OTP starts right after the signup. So in this file, I have the signup route that we created. This basically accepts the user data and makes some validation checks on them. When it is satisfied with the validation checks, it goes on to check if the user already exists. If the user exists, we return an error message, otherwise we create a new user. We store all the data normally, with the exception of the password which we hash using bcrypt. After hashing the password, the user data is stored with an additional property of verified, which will be false by default. This is the property that we'll be playing with during the verification process. Now right after saving the user successfully is when our verification begins. So we create a function and call it send OTP verification email. This function will be an async function, so that we'll be able to make asynchronous requests in a try catch block. In the try block, the first thing we'll do is to generate our OTP, that is our four random numbers. We can do this with the help of the math.random function. Now for the four digit number, the maximum that we can get is 9999. Adding just one to that will sum to 10,000. So to get the result that we want, we make use of math.random and multiply it by 9,000. Now math.random will give us a number between 0 and 1, but 1 is exclusive, meaning that it can never give us 1. So with this, we are never going to get 9,000 as an answer, but it will be possible to get a value way less than 9,000, which will not be equal to the 4 digits that we want. So to cater for this, we we'll add 1000 as the baseline value, so that no matter what, the value that we get will be 4 digits, and it will never be up to the 5 digits which will be 10,000 or more. Now since this calculation can end in a decimal value, we make use of math.floor to convert this to an integer. Now we set up the options for the email. For this we we'll use node mailer, which we have set up using our email and password to enable us to send emails. So we create a mail options object. We specify our email as the value of the from property and the email of the user as the value of the to property. Now we expect to receive the email as an argument when this function is called. So in the function parameters, we will destructure the email and also we will destructure the ID of the user. In addition to that, we will receive the router response object. Now back in the mail options, we will provide a subject for the email and we will have an HTML property which will be assigned our message to the user. Using the HTML property makes it possible to style the content with some HTML tags. For the actual OTP, we ensure that we make it bold. And also we tell the user that the OTP will expire in one hour. Now we proceed to storing the generated OTP, which will go on to hash using bcrypt. First, we create a salt runs variable and assign it a value of 10. The salt runs will determine how hard it will be to reverse the hash that will be generated. Now we call the hash method on bcrypt and pass it the OTP and the sort rounds. We will then await the result and store it as the hashed OTP. Now making use of the user OTP verification model, we will create a new record. This will receive the user ID, the OTP and also the created at and the expires at. For the expires at, we add the equivalent of 1 hour in milliseconds to the current time. 
Also for the OTP, we make sure that we store the hashed one. All this will be awaited and stored in the new OTP verification variable. Now we actually save the record to the database by calling the save method on the new OTP verification. After that is complete, we make use of the transporter to send our email. This will receive the mail options and we await that as well. After that is complete, we return a JSON object with a status of pending and a message. Also, we add a data property which will contain the user ID and the email. This will help us later on when we want to request for a recent. Now in the catch block, we return a JSON object with a status of field and also an error message, which we get from the actual error. Now back in the sign up section, when we are done saving the user, we call the send OTP verification email and pass it the result and also the response object. Now we can quickly test the OTP verification request after sign up. So in Postman, I'll make a new post request and make a call to the sign up endpoint. As we can see in the server.js file, we set it to run on port 5000. And also our server router makes use of the forest slash user endpoint. With the body of the request set to raw and JSON, we'll pass some data. And we need to ensure that the email is valid to be able to receive the code. Now we send the request which responds with a status of pending, meaning that the OTP has been sent and it should be in our email. Now how do we verify this? To do this, we go back to our user API file and create another post route. We'll give this an endpoint on verify OTP. The second argument to this route will be an async function, with the request and response object as the parameters. In this, we'll open a try catch block. First, to verify, we expect to receive the user ID and the OTP. So we destructure those values from the body of the request. If any of these values are empty, we want to throw an error. And throwing the error, we make use of the error class here, which you can use without importing anything. We'll pass our message as an argument to it. If that is not the case, we'll call the find method on the user OTP verification model. As an argument, we'll pass an object containing the user ID which will then await the result and store it in a variable we'll call user OTP verification records. Now, if the length of this user OTP verification records is less than or equal to zero, it means that we found no record and we can throw an error. So this situation means that the account is invalid or has been verified already. So we tell the user to either sign up or log in. Or if an actual record exists, we'll start by checking for the expiry. So we start by distracting the expire site property from the user OTP verification records array. Also, we fetch the hashed OTP from the OTP key of the targeted record. Having that, we check if the expire site is less than the current time. If that is the case, it means that it's in the past and the record has expired. So we first call the delete method on our model and pass it the user ID. And we wait for it to be completed before we proceed. After that, we throw an error and say that the code has expired, so you have to request again. Now, if the code has not expired, we verify the validity of the code by using bcrypt. So using bcrypt, we will compare the received OTP to the hash one we fetched from the database. This request will return a Boolean value. So we check if the value is false, then it means that the OTP is wrong, so we can throw an error and say that the code passed was invalid. Otherwise, the code matched successfully, and we can go ahead to update our user. To do this, we we'll await a call of the update one method on the user. This will first take an object containing the ID of the user and also we'll pass a second object which will change the verified property to true. Right after that, we don't need our verification record anymore. So we we'll await a call to the delete method on the verification model and pass it the user ID. Once we have that, we finally return a JSON object with a status of verified and also a message saying that the email has been verified. In the catch block, which will receive all the errors that we threw, we will return a JSON object which will have a status of field and a message which we will receive from the errors. Now quickly, we can test this out in Postman. So we make a push request to the verify endpoint. Now the body of this request will expect a user ID and the OTP. So for the user ID, we will get it from the result of our last request and for the OTP, we will get it from our email. Once we have that, we can send the request and I will get the confirmation that our account has been verified. Now, how about if the code expires and we want to request for another one? That is where the recent comes in. So back in our API file once again, we'll create another post route with the recent OTP verification code endpoint. This will also take an async function which receives the request and the response object. In this function, we'll open a try-catch block 
and once again, we expect to receive the user ID and the email from the body of the request. If any of these details are empty, you want to throw an error. Otherwise, we enter the else block and we first ensure that we delete all the verification records for the particular user. After that is done, we can go ahead to send the OTP again by making a call to the send OTP verification email function. As argument, we will pass an object with the user ID and the email and also the response object. In the catch block, we will do as we've done for the others by returning a failed status and an error message. With that in place, we can create another post request in Postman with a recent endpoint and we'll pass the user ID and the email as the body of the request. Providing valid details should result in a status of pending and the new OTP should be in your inbox. Now in this Node.js project, we've created all the routes and methods that we needed in one API file, but that quickly becomes difficult to manage. So we will consider how to clean this up in the coming video. Until then, you can check out the full playlist here to see how we got to this point in the project and how to host it for your application. Also, the link to the source code will be in the description, so you can check it out. Thanks for watching.